Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this special WWE report. We're going to take a look at five things that could change now that Vince McMahon has retired. If you're anything like me, as soon as you heard that news, you were shocked. But also you started to think about, well, what does this mean? What is it that could actually change in WWE? And I've given this some thought over the last 24 hours. These are maybe the five things that kind of jump out first of all. But uh, I think the truth is that everything could change. Like everything now is available to change. The only reason why I don't think it will, or certainly not yet, is because a lot of people that are in positions of power have been there for a long time. They were hired by Vince, kind of really trained by Vince, told what to think, what to do, what to say. I think there's going to be a lot of habits that are going to be very difficult to just, you know, abandon. Um, you know, I think the feel of the show, the way the shows are structured, the expectations that are put onto people are largely going to be the same. I don't I don't see this like changing overnight, um, but it will be interesting to see where we are in, say, 12 months time. I do think there will be changes uh, and maybe some of these things are quick fixes and maybe some of these things are things we will see change. So let's get started, shall we? Five things that uh, could change now that Vince McMahon has retired from WWE. So number one, smaller guys getting opportunities. That's why we've got Daniel Bryan on screen. Daniel Bryan won the uh, championships at WrestleMania 30, was not meant to win those championships. He was actually going to have a match against Sheamus, um, but the crowd was so vocal in wanting Daniel to be in that main event, they had to listen to the fans. The fans forced that moment. That was not down to Vince. It was down to you. It was down to the fans demanding that moment. Vince just doesn't give the smaller guys the opportunities that they deserve. Um, going all the way back in history, if you think about uh, the likes of Hulk Hogan being champion in the 80s, obviously a larger guy. Um, even by the time we get into the early 90s, we are starting to see Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels get an opportunity. But uh, there's a reason for that, and that is the steroid trial. So uh, obviously, there was a lot of pressure on WWE uh, to uh, make sure that steroids weren't being used in the company. There was allegations that Vince had actually been giving the wrestlers steroids. There was a big trial, even looked like Vince could go to prison. Um, obviously, for those of you that know the history, it didn't go that way. Vince uh, wasn't convicted, wasn't found guilty, he got off. Um, and uh, and so, you know, this is why bigger guys weren't being used at the time. Vince wanted to show that, you know, they're not, they're not all about the big guys. The smaller guys as well um, that uh, can be champion. And so Bret Hart got an opportunity. Shawn Michaels got an opportunity. But uh, very quickly, you know, we start to see Diesel bigger guy. We start to see Psycho Sid getting pushed, bigger guy. Uh, so the bigger guy is kind of, you know, he reaches out and brings the warrior back, for example. So he couldn't really help himself. He just loves bigger guys. He loves muscles and all of that. So um, smaller guys just don't get much of a look in. Uh, this moment, this is, you know, one of the best moments that was demanded uh, by the fans. Uh, Rey Mysterio, when he won the Royal Rumble and won the title, that was kind of demanded because of Eddie Guerrero passing away. And uh, again, you know, it's kind of like this is what the fans want. And so the fans kind of forced that again, really. So, you know, left to his own devices, Vince wouldn't really look to, you know, use uh, a smaller guy. And so you have to look at people like Adam Cole, who was obviously left now. Uh, Johnny Gagano, who could return, but I can understand him being a bit concerned that the main roster might not be the place for him. Um, there's a long list, a long list of smaller guys. Look at Ricochet and, uh, you know, what he can do in the ring. And um, he's just always seemed to come up against barriers, hurdles, same as Neville when Neville was around. Again, the list goes on and on and on. Um, if you're a bigger guy, if you're a Brock Lesnar under Vince, you would have been a made man. But, um, you know, maybe that will change now. Maybe we will see opportunities come in uh, for those smaller wrestlers. 
Second on the list, and I understand this is a weird picture, but bear with me. Uh, this is banned words. So rather than hospital, which is what you can see there, uh, people are told to call that a medical facility. Uh, rather than saying a title or a belt or a strap, they have to say championship. Rather than saying wrestler, you can't even say wrestler in WWE. You have to say superstar. I, I believe you can't even use the word wrestling. You can't say wrestling. Wrestling is banned. The word wrestling is banned in the WWE. So uh, it's pretty crazy. There's this long list. You know, some of them make sense. Some like insider terms. Things like babyface, heel, kayfabe, those kind of words you can't use. But, you know, the ones that I just mentioned, I don't e I mean, I heard you can't even use the word blood. I mean, there is a long list of words that are banned, um, which are Vince-isms. And now Vince has gone, we might start to see uh, that open up. And I understand that maybe this isn't the biggest deal in the world. But um, I do think that it maybe takes away from the freedom of promos. And, you know, we might even start to see some promos not being scripted. I mean, a large reason why promos are scripted is because it's felt that some of the talent just aren't good enough. But also because there's certain specific things that they wanted them to say. You know, we could really look to move away from that now. And maybe we start to see a lot more live promos uh, promos written by the wrestlers uh, where they're using kind of any terms they want. I don't think there's any banned words other than swear words in uh, AEW, for example. So this could really open up the whole kind of promo landscape, if you will. And um, that could be very exciting because I think sometimes promos come across as very scripted, very stale um, and not very imaginative, and uh, I think the wrestlers themselves can do much, much better. So uh, that will be something to keep an eye on. Number three. Mm. Now, this is interesting. I think this picture really sums up perfectly uh, what I'm talking about with this, and that is the presentation of the show. So if you think about how the shows are put together, so the use of CGI, the way that, uh, you know, they uh, do the interviews... Anything to do with what you basically see on TV. Um, you know, the uh, number of replays that we get, like the formatting of the show, the camera angles, how sterile everything is. Like every arena feels the same. Every episode of Raw feels like every other episode of Raw. Every episode of SmackDown feels like every other episode of SmackDown. If they go somewhere, <clears throat> doesn't feel special. If they go to Nashville, then they don't really do anything kind of, you know, Nashville themed. If they go to Florida, there's not really anything Florida themed. Like, it's the same setup every single week. The presentation's the same. It's very sterile. And, I mean, this segment alone here, I mean, you know, the idea of cutting promos at, at the top of ladders, I mean, it does look silly. I can understand why you would do it. I understand because you want to advertise money in the bank and, you know, it's all about climbing a ladder and everything. But it just looks silly. I mean, it, to me, it just looks every time that we go to uh, an episode of SmackDown and there's a load of wrestlers at ladders. You do sort of think to yourself, like, well, why did they agree to do that? Why did they turn around and say, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Sounds great. Like, why didn't someone like Seth Rollins just laugh? When he got told, like, you need to climb up a ladder and cut a promo. Um, because it just looks looks strange. Like, you don't need to sell the idea of a ladder match by chucking wrestlers up and doing that. Uh, and the same with some of the CGI. You know, doesn't really grab me. Doesn't look great. Some of it's cool. Some of it mm, can look a bit horrific. Um, as I said, you know, the way that the shows are formatted, the number of replays. Oh, my God. I mean, if you actually take out the adverts and take out all the replays, I don't even know how much show you're actually left with. So, um, you know, all of that stuff could be reviewed, streamlined, could be different presentation. I'd really like it if every show just felt that little bit different. Um, you know, there could be some... Um, different staging that they do, some different little decorations or, you know, there's different things that you can do. Have the wrestlers kind of come out in quirky gear specific to where they are. Uh, maybe even if you don't want to do that like uh, every week, but you just want to do it, say, once a month. Once a month, they do like a bit of a themed show 
and you've got Nashville and then you've got Florida and then maybe you've got New York and maybe we go to London. I mean, when they came to London, they used to have like the Union Jack flags and the taxi and the red phone box. Like they did actually do what we're saying, but that was really one of the only places that they would do that. So, and I don't even think they do that anymore, to be honest. I don't think in London, when you go to a Raw, there is a black cab or a red phone box, or I think they might still have the Union Jack flags. But um, my point is that there's a lot that could be done. The camera angles, you know, uh, that just the way that the entrances are done, anything to do with the presentation. Now, there is one person that's going to still be standing in the way of change, and that is Kevin Dunn. Kevin Dunn is the person that kind of produces, directs the shows, and he's been in that position for a long, long time, going all the way back to like early 90s, late 80s. Um, and so that's why a lot of the shows feel the same. It's the same guy that's producing them, basically. But, you know, maybe he'll have a bit more freedom now. But I feel like he's a Vince loyalist. I think he will still want to deliver the shows the way he's been doing them now for like, what, 30 years plus uh, I mean, he, he's not going to change. Or, or now that Vince isn't around, he's not going to change unless he's told to change. Uh, so uh, that'll be something just uh, worth keeping an eye on because uh, it really could make the weekly shows feel quite fresh. I mean, look at AEW again. You know, they do Fighter Fest one week. We've got uh, Bash at the Beach. We've got the Jericho Cruise. Like, they do lots of different things. They're doing a show in Arthur Ashe Stadium, which feels very different to an arena. Um, and these aren't like pay-per-views. These are just their weekly shows. So uh, I do think you could have theme shows. There's definitely things that you could do to refresh the presentation. Next up, uh, the names, the wrestlers' names. I mean, look, that was horrific. That is Shorty G. That is Chad Gable becoming Shorty G. Um, you know, no one ever looked at Chad Gable and really thought he was small. I, it was never anything I thought but for some reason, it's something Vince thought. Um, again, going back to how he doesn't really care for small wrestlers. He looked at Shorty G, saw he was short, and we got Shorty G, which I don't think was a name that Vince came up with. I think it might be The Miz that came up with that name, actually. But um, even so, they accepted it and they ran with it. You know, we've seen Dominic Dijakovic becoming T-Bar. <laughs> you know, we've seen Pete Dunne becoming Butch. Uh, you know, there's a lot of first names that have been dropped. Matt Riddle is Riddle. Austin Theory is Theory. Um, so this one isn't the biggest deal in the world. But uh, again, you know, maybe some of these characters, you know, that uh, are a bit cringe. Maybe we'll start to move away from some of those. You know, Butch, for example. I just don't think Pete Dunn was amazing as the bruiser weight uh, down in NXT and NXT UK. Uh, he was so over, so popular. He was just known for being a great wrestler. And look at him now. Now he's just like scrappy do, trying to get at people and start fights. And, um, you know, he goes by the name of Butch. It's a bit, it's a bit underwhelming. It's, uh, it's not like Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn was cool. Mm, Butch isn't cool. So, uh, and Shorty G was not cool as well. Um, it's the same with like, you know, Dio Madden became Mace. Mia Yim became uh reckoning i know that was because of the group retribution but um the point remains that uh these name changes you know la knight becoming max dupree uh i just think that um characters gimmicks name changes all of that can be reviewed i i personally would like to see nxt go back to black and gold i'm not a big fan of nxt being 2.0 um, NXT going back to black and gold and then churn out that quality superstar that they were developing. Um, you know, not the kind of gimmicky superstars that seem to be in NXT 2.0 now, but the, uh, you know, the quality that was coming out, the indie wrestlers that were coming out. This next in line, I mean, it's great for finding people that have got a good look, but uh, there is something to be said for wrestling ability. And, uh, you know, there's some great wrestlers out there. Um, so it would be great to see their recruitment as well, where they're getting these people from, what NXT looks like. I suppose, uh, in a way, this this is character. It's more than just the names. It's the characters that are, that are coming out. So I'd be really interested to see, you know, what it is that uh, NXT becomes. 
Uh, is it going to stay 2.0? Will it go back to as it was? Um, what kind of superstars? Where are they getting the next superstars? Are they going to the Indies? Are they going to that next in-line program? There's lots to uh, get your teeth into on that one. And then the final one is a short one. Returns. I've said all along I don't see The Fiend coming back because I think Vince is a barrier. I think that Vince McMahon is a real barrier to that because he had a big falling out with uh, Bray, um, apparently, and they didn't see eye to eye on creative. Whilst Vince was there, I just really struggled to see The Fiend coming back. Now Vince has gone, I could see that happening. I can see The Fiend coming back. Not only that, Sasha, Naomi can see those guys coming back. Really anyone that's uh, gone you know, there was a lot of people that got released last year. If there was anyone there that WWE now feel they could do something with, um, they might reach out to some of these stars and start bringing some people back. So I think if you are someone hoping that this could lead to the return of The Fiend or Sasha or Braun, um, you know, or Johnny Gagano, uh, yes is the answer. I can see those coming back. I can see the barrier that was preventing some of them from returning now being removed. Um, with Steph at the helm, all you keep hearing about is, you know, how uh, popular she is. So, yeah, I think there's a great chance that uh, you will now see uh, people coming back. But um, obviously there's no guarantee of it. There's no guarantee. But uh, I do think that uh, really everything's on the table. And as I said at the start, Anything can change here. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think is going to change? What do you want to see change now that Vince McMahon has retired? Appreciate the support, guys. Don't forget we do live watch-alongs for Raw and for SmackDown. And uh, we also do review shows, live review shows, 10 minutes after those shows end. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Join us for those. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.